Hello, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the instant match reaction from Switzerland 2, Republic of Ireland 0. Um, away, one of the two games that we had in which to um, qualify. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but uh, I'll start off with the lineup, and uh, it was a couple of shocks in there. Aaron Connolly started, Alan Brown started, um, Enda Stevens came back in for Matt Doherty. So the lineup was Darren Randolph and goal, Seamus Coleman, Shane Duffy, John Egan, Enda Stevens, and then you had Whelan, and you had Brown and Hendrick in there. So Brown came in for Connor Howran. And then you had Aaron Connolly out on the wide, he started out wide right, and you had Colin Centre forward with the clean out left. Um, now for me, I just don't see what McLean's offering the team in any way, shape or form. Um, people go on about McLean, oh well, he gives it all his passion, he gives it all the heart and I just feel like if we're looking to qualify for tournaments, is he the answer? You know, it's all well and good having the heart and the passion and everything like that but um, I think his time as a regular international starting games is over. Maybe have him on for the last 10-15 minutes but I just don't. I just don't think he should be anywhere near the first team. He can't even get in the team at Stoke at the minute, and he's been pushed back to left back when he is being played. So um, that's just my opinion on, on McLean. Um, then just looking around the team, I thought Ender Stevens had probably his best game in an Ireland jersey. Um, as well as that, I was looking at there was a bit of a difference in our plays. We were keeping the ball a lot more than trying to. Well, maybe not in the first half, but we were trying to keep the ball a lot more on the ground and there was times where we could have lumped it up long and we could have checked him back in and just in the first half I thought it was an improvement on the Georgia game but it wasn't like and I remember people were slating me on Twitter and, and, and Facebook for saying that but I did think it was an improvement we did try to look like we could get you know around the pitch a bit more a bit more energy in there and albeit it was better it wasn't great either way the first half um, I thought Mick McCarthy was really like there was times where he was just changing things up when he just didn't need to be. Like he had Connolly was on the right and he was on the left and he was through the middle and it was just all happening during the game and just didn't need to. Obviously they scored a fantastic goal through Seferovic and uh, Glenn, Whelan, Glenn Whelan, who I thought had a super game. He got beaten in the air, falls to Seferovic and uh, he takes a strike. Now whether Shane Duffy could have done better there, I'm not too sure. You'd have to ask a centre half or a coach um, if if he should have done better there. The ball goes through his legs. I'm not sure. He just looks like he's trying to um, get down and, and cover the ball. So for me, I thought him himself and Egan were brilliant again at the back. Seamus Coleman was brilliant till he got the yellow card. He got a needless yellow card in the first half, which ultimately allowed him to get sent off. Now I haven't seen that back um, to see what happened, but allegedly it was Shane Duffy who handballed it and Coleman. Got sent off for that was that was what was being said on the commentary, but um, I'll get to that in a sec. But one nil a half time, but we were still creating chances. Do you know what I mean? We didn't look like we were getting hammered, and we didn't. They were just they just have better players than us. I didn't, like what we have in heart and passion. I suppose they have in quality, and uh, you can see that by the way they pass the ball around. You know. They have some really good players. And Bolo was brilliant. Sefovic is very good. I hate that Lichtensteiner. He's a fucking prick. I hate him. Um, I just wish someone had a left one on him because he was, the first half especially, he was doing a lot to, to get into Connolly's head and he was doing sly little things as well. And they were they were, they were were clever about it too. Like um, You would like someone like uh, Lichtensteiner in your team because the way he winds opposition players up albeit I don't like him and he, up, he winds fans up on the opposite team. But we don't have that. Like Coleman gets far too involved in things that he just doesn't need to. That's what led to him getting the yellow, having a spat with Xhaka for no reason at all. And it was a, it was a silly yellow in the first place. And whatever happened between Duffy and, uh, or him for the second yellow, either way, if we avoid the first yellow, he doesn't get sent off. Now he's out of the 10-mark game. People will be crying out for Matt Dodge to be playing. He probably deserves his shot, to be fair to him. So he'll be, he'll be in there. But I just thought, in the second half, I thought Glenn Whelan was fantastic. I thought he, he just tried to cover every blade of grass. I'm just, I, we, were, we were limited to chances, though. And as much as we tried to play the ball around or whatever, Connolly was left quite isolated, a bit like Collins 
was for uh, for the Georgia game. But at halftime, Collins was off for O'Dowd. O'Dowd did, did well when he came on. Didn't have a lot to aim at. I thought Alan Brown had a good game. And he was trying to get on the ball. And when Collins went, got sent off, he had to go right back. And he's still, he still done moderately okay. But kind of looking around the team, Egan was brilliant. Dan Randolph made some fabulous saves to keep us in the game. One from a, from a header from a corner. He got Seferovic again. Then he obviously saves a penalty. So um, I just think I, I just think he's worth his weight in goal for us because without him, I do believe that we would have lost a couple of games in this qualifying round. And people do forget that this is the first game we've lost. People are tr- treating it like we've we've lost a lot of games. This is the first loss we've had. We've been unbeaten up until now. And I thought we we tried to have a go in the second half. First half we were a bit cautious, maybe showing a, a little bit too much respect, but we we. We were better than we were with, with Georgia, and we were having attempts on goal, which is a lot better. But even in the second half, I just thought, like from our defenders, we were trying to play it out from the back, and I think that's where Coleman he, he looked like a liability in the second half because he was, I think it was Embolo takes the ball up and it goes out for a corner, and that's the corner that they that they hit the post from as well. So. They they had their chances too, let's not forget, but there was chances where we were making errors and they were capitalising. And I spoke again about quality beforehand and said their players are just probably better than ours. I mean, McLean needs to be taken out of the first team. Um, Robinson, there was no sign of tonight. Um, he had brought on Scott Hogan for a Connolly, which I thought was bizarre. And I was thinking at the time, okay, this could be a massive stroke if he scores, but if not, it just looks really bad. Um, he was saying after the game that Connolly came off feeling sad and, uh, and annoyed. You're going to obviously, come, if you're that frustrated, you're obviously going to come off sad and annoyed. And he was comparing to Kevin Kilbans and he had a horrendous first game. Went on to have 100 plus caps. That's, yeah, look, no one's denying that he's not going to go on and have a great international career, albeit he can stay injury free because he looks like a great player. But he needs the service as well. I think that's what we're lacking in midfield is that player to get on the ball and zip a pass through because there was times there where we were trying to play that penetrative pass and it just wasn't happening. Hendrick was trying to play balls through and they just weren't coming off. I thought when Glenn Whelan was getting on the ball and he was spraying it from left to right and people saying that he was the worst player they've ever seen and all that. I just don't get it. It's just a case of hatred towards a player just because you just don't like him. You know, you got to give credit where credit's due and regardless of how you feel about Whelan, he's probably our best player on the pitch other than our two centre-backs and goalkeeper. Um, up top, we're not getting enough. Bo- we're not getting enough service to players quick enough, and I think that shows. But we were having a go. Like we did look like we did look dangerous on the attack in the second half, and w- I thought we we actually gave it a go, and we didn't throw the kitchen sink at it. I get that, but we played the best team in the group and went at them. You know, we played them at home, sat back, and then we had to go at them at the end for the last fifteen minutes. It sets up a cup final against Denmark in the game the game at the Aviva. And this is where the crowd are going to have to play a massive part. And this is where I bring it to you guys. Is you look at when you look at when we score a goal or we have an attack, when the, that, that feeling the players get from the crowd, we have to make the place a fortress. Otherwise, kiss goodbye to any Euro 2020. We need to make, we need to get the fans singing early doors. We need to put the chills into this Danish team. But just before I finish, they obviously scored that second goal. Um, it was a bit unlucky from Shane Duffy that it just happened to be that the ball was going in either way. He almost clears it, hits the post and goes in. Randolph was well beaten as well. Um, it was going bottom corner from the replay. So, look... Um, did we give it a good shot? I believe so. Can we sit here crying about it and saying, oh, well, we don't have the players or some genius on Twitter thinking he's Pep Guardiola and saying that someone should come on and do this and do that, which isn't really going to happen. Lads, we're not Manchester City. We're not Liverpool. We're not Chelsea. We're not Barcelona. We're not Real Madrid. We're not any of these teams that play that unbelievable football hence why they're winning things and they're at the top of the league and no one can beat them okay so let's be realistic here we have what we have we're limited in players that and and the way we play 
So just get behind your country, get behind the team. Like what? I just look at this ball of negativity. People telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm clearly watching the same game. Is it like? I just don't. I just don't get what game you think you're watching because you expect us to get the ball down and play, and I thought we did that. But then we're just lacking the bit of creativity that opens the team up. And there's so many teams that are always looking for these good number 10s because there's not that many of them out there because all the top clubs have them. Unfortunately, we're playing international football here and we can't draft in a player of that quality or we can't buy one. So we have to make do with what we have. And instead of bitching and complaining and whining, get yourself to the Aviva Stadium. We're playing... A, a cup final basically against Denmark we win that we're into the Euros another European competition you remember Euro 2016 the memories that were made at that and for fucking crying out loud just get behind the team because it's it's too negative it's far too negative and we need to just get behind the team we've got one game away from qualifying if you had to said that a year ago when we were drawn against Northern Ireland at nil nil and there was nothing going, you know, he would have bitten your hand off for it. To be told that you're one game away from qualifying, this is a chance to get redemption for them for that 5-1 game. You know, it's, it would be nearly exactly two years to the day when we played them because we lost in the 5-1 in November. The two-leg game, the playoff obviously for the World Cup. So, look, that's been my thoughts anyway. Um, I thought Denmark would, or sorry, I thought Switzerland had far better players than us, man for man. I didn't think that their performance showed that. I think McLean needs to be dropped for the next game. Um, we need someone up there that has better delivery and more quality on the ball. Um, not to just harp about him. I didn't think I didn't think Jeff Hendrick had a great game again. I thought Glenn Whelan was good, and um, I think the sending off of Seamus Coleman affected. Odell his performance probably um, so I'm not sure if Mick will give him another go but we, I think it shows how much we really miss David McGoldrick and hopefully he, he'll get back playing soon and, and be injury free and he'll be available for the game against Denmark because I think himself and Connolly up there would be, it would be great to add to the team you know and look let's try and remain positive um, that's been my instant match reaction We'll have the final word tomorrow. I'm going to have Gary Spain and Joe from Irish Abroad on with myself. And uh, we might have one more. So if you are Pep Guardiola or Jurgen Klopp or you're giving the large one uh, and you want to come on, drop us a message. We'll speak to you soon. Thanks very much for watching.